Welcome to our webinar, Getting Involved in ACRL. Everything you need to know about volunteering for an ACRL division level committee, section committee, ACRL interests in discussion groups. As we're, thank, again, thank you for joining us. And could you please, in, in the chat, and introduce yourself and let us know where you're listening in from. It's much appreciated. Next slide, please. So my name is Russell Mahalik. I'm the ACRL membership chair. I'm the library director at Goldie Beacom College in Wilmington, Delaware. And now we're gonna get started. In today's pre presentation, we're just going over a few brief things on logistics. Today's present presentation will be approximately 45 minutes, which will leave time for your questions at the end. We will record this session and make the slide deck with notes available to you. Technical assistance is provided today by Eloa Sharp. She will help troubleshoot any issues you might be having. Just let us know in the chat box if you need help. If you have any questions as we go along, please cite them in the chat and we'll either answer then as we go along or at the end of the presentation. We will also post a link to our evaluation of this presentation at the end of the session. Your participation in the evaluation will help us make improvements to next year's presentation. And finally, if you have any questions come up after this session and closes, please send them to Mary Jane Petrowski at mpetrowski at ala.org or myself and my email will be at the end of the slide and I'll forward it on to Mary Jane. Now I'll move on to the agenda. Next slide, please. Today's session is intended to make the ACRL appointment process more transparent to both new ACRL members and anyone who would like to become more involved in ACRL. ACRL. As you can see, we've got a full agenda starting off with introductions. Then we'll move on to the ACRL organizational structure, ACRL division level committee appointment process, ACRL section committees, the, more about LRNC, leadership recruitment and nomination committee and interest in discussion groups. We'll have questions and then an evaluation at the end. Next slide, please. Today's panelists will be joining us from Michigan and California. First, I'd like to introduce Julie Garrison, the ACRL, 20, ACRL president from 2021 to 2022, Dean of Western Michigan University. Rachel Minkin, Chair of Leadership Recruitment and Nomination Committee, Assistant Dean for Faculty Engagement at Michigan State University Libraries. And Heather M. Smedberg, Chair of the Rare Books and Manuscript Section, Reference and Instruction Coordinator, in special collections archives and archives at the University of San Diego Library. Next slide, please. Also, the, will be joining us is Lauren Carlton, the ACRL program coordinator, staff liaison to ACRL, in, interest groups and ACRL discussion groups. And I will be ch ch chiming in throughout the presentation. Next slide, please. There are many opportunities to participate and volunteer in ACRL. Many of you may be interested in serving on an ACRL committee. There are many options, including over 50 level division level committees, all of which are dedicated to advancing the strategic plan. These committees are established by the ACRL board. There are also 300 plus section committees. There are 16 sections. We need 19 discussion group conveners every year. And also we need an additional 20 interest group conveners. Don't forget that the 42 ACRL chapters, which are independent legal entities, also have volunteer opportunities. Next slide, please. In terms of the volunteer ACRL volunteer timeline, volunteers can complete an online committee volunteer form between December 3rd, tomorrow, 2021, and February 15th, 2022. The ACRL vice president and section vice chairs make appointment decisions mid-February 2022 to April 2022. Volunteers begin their appointment term on July 1st, 2022. They connect, contribute, collaborate, volunteer for division and section committees and editorial boards. Link is below and you can access that if you, when we send out the slides later on after upon the conclusion of the presentation. Next slide, please. Please note, committee service is limited to five years of conse consecutive service on each committee. Members should not hold more than three committee appointments at the same time. 
ACR has about 1,800 volunteer opportunities, but because appointments are staggered, only about 1,300 appointments are made every year. You cannot be officially appointed until you accept your appointment via email. If you have difficulty logging into the volunteer form, please check your membership status by calling 800-545-2433, extension 5. We just want to remind everyone that ACL gets a staggering amount of email about login problems close to the volunteer deadline. And usually people can't log in because their ALA and our ACL membership has expired. The volunteer form is linked to the membership database. And now I would like to introduce our ACRL president, Julie Garrison. Thank you, Rusty. You're welcome. Okay. Um, so as Rusty stated, my name is Julie Garrison and I am the current president of ACRL. Um, I'm also the Dean of Libraries at Western Michigan University. There are a few, there, as Rusty mentioned, there are many ways to get involved with ACRL. Um, and I'm going to talk specifically about the division level committees uh, and that appointment process. So um, ACRL division level committees are created by the ACRL board of directors. And each committee is charged to carry out specific functions, goals, and interests as related to the plan for excellence for ACRL. Uh, you can find the list of division level committees and their charges at the ACRL website. Appointments are completed each year by the ACRL president elect in consultation with the ACRL appointments committee. Matching volunteers to committees takes place in the spring of each year. As Rusty mentioned, that process starts in March and completes at the end of April or sometimes into May. Uh, as the president-elect in 2020-21, I had the honor and privilege of completing the 2021-22 division level committee appointments, those that started just this past July. Um, the number of committee appointments varies each year, as was mentioned, and it depends on the number of members who are cycling off of specific committees and also what the particular needs are of the committees. Those do change as time goes on. The president-elect and members of the appointments committee solicit feedback from the, about the current needs of, of the committees from the chairs and the vice chairs, and this does help inform the process. I uh, want to also mention that we use the volunteer form that is completed to match committee needs with member volunteers um, and their interests and their expertise. So sharing as much information as, as possible on those forms about what your interests are and what your background um, and experience is, is very helpful when it comes to helping us match and um, make appointments and recommendations. Next slide, please. ACRL's core commitment to EDI is central in this process. As you may know, the ACRL board approved the core commitment to equity, diversity, and inclusion in 2018. During our appointments process, we seek to offer leadership and service opportunities to, members, to member volunteers with this commitment in mind. In order to help ACRL acknowledge and address historical racial inequities, challenge oppressive systems within academic libraries and within the association, value different ways of knowing, and identify and work to eliminate barriers to equitable services, spaces, resources, and scholarship, we work to ensure that we are looking for and offering appointments um, opportunities to racialized and racially or ethnically underrepresented volunteers. It's a long sentence. Additionally, appointments seek to have geographic uh, representation and um, diversity and diversity in types of institutions that are represented, diversity in the roles and the duties that are represented and a balance of seniority, experience and tenure. There, there are deliberate discussions between the president elect and the appointments committee each year with the goal of building upon the previous year's work and furthering this commitment. We work hard to engage new members and voices in this appointments process. 
Next slide, please. To give you a sense of the scope and the scale of appointments, I want to share a few numbers from the 2021-22 appointment cycle. Please know that I'm reporting on unique volunteers, so these numbers are a little different from the information that's shared later in the presentation about section volunteers. I suggest focusing on the big picture rather than the math, um, because the numbers between the two areas will not match exactly. We had 817 unique volunteers this past cycle. This was down one from the previous year and down over 200 from the pre-pandemic, the last year of the pre-pandemic cycle. This past year, we saw a decline in the number of individuals volunteering for division level service. Only 36% applied to serve on division level committees. 22.5% of those who volunteered applied to serve on editorial boards and just over 50% applied to serve on section level committees. We made 843 unique volunteer appointments. This is slightly up from 824 last year. A few volunteers received two appointments to division level committees. Three members were appointed to two division level committees. Um, we had 10 members who were appointed to one committee and one editorial board. No members were appointed to three or more committees. Um, and there were nine individuals who were offered appointments who did not accept them. So you can see it kind of fluctuates um, and is a process. So we had 600, or excuse me, 162 appointments that were made to division level committees, 35 appointments that were made to editorial boards, and 681 appointments that were made to section committees. Again, my section numbers may be a little off from what you'll learn a little bit later in the presentation from Heather. I just completed a recent report in the 2021 22, about the 21 22 appointment cycle, and this has been published in ACRL Insider. The link for more information is available on the slide, and it'll be sent out after this presentation. In addition to appointments to division level committees, the president and president elect do engage volunteers in other types of service, such as task forces. These happen outside of this cycle. Um, an appointment cycle and may occur any time during the year, throughout the year. Next slide, please. This slide and the next one show the demographic breakdown of the 21-22 volunteer pool. This is self-reported on the volunteer form and information we started to collect recently. This next cycle will be our fourth year collecting this information. This is the one by race and ethnicity. The breakdown by race and ethnicity. And if the next slide will show volunteers by gender. Now I want to hand it back over to Rusty, who will share more about the process and go over the volunteer form. Rusty, I think you're muted. Thank, thank you, Julie. Um, let's apologize for that. And here's a link for the ACRL 2022-2023 volunteer form. Um, please, I just want to reiterate, and I know this has happened to some of my friends before, um, check your membership status before trying to log in. If someone's membership expires at the end of January and they try to, if you try to volunteer and do the form in, fe in February, the system pre may prevent your access. So staff receive a fair number of calls, and this is usually why people can't access the form. Now, next slide, please, Zilos. So we did some screenshots of the vol committee volunteer form committee selection, and this is what the form looks like. Um, you have a, it says, please select the group of for, for which you want to volunteer and click the continue button. So there's a drop down menu that says ALA on the screen. Um, you click on that and then it'll take you to the ACRL. You, you click on ACRL. Next slide, please. And this is what that would look like. So you you start out with ALA and you and click the drop down menu and then it would it says ACRL. Next slide, please. All right. So this is the um this is a slide for the ACRL doll, volunteer 
form, the ACRL volunteer form for consideration for the 2022-2023 appointments, the online volunteer form must be completed by February 15th, and most appointments will be finalized by May 31, 2022. Um, and it's, there's a lot of information there for you to read if you wish. And next slide, please. Members can select as many committees as they wish to volunteer for, but members can only serve on a maximum of three committees at a time. Um, Julie has mentioned that you can only not, no one has was served on more than three. Also for, for the appointment process, we, even though it does say any division level committee, as Julie pointed out, the more information you can provide the selection committee to, have so that best fits your skill level, the more likely you will be fit to the, the division, the committee that you select. Um, so try to be as, and share as much as possible and pick things that match your skill set is what is probably the biggest takeaway from that is. Next slide, please. This is the first half of the volunteer form. Again, Share as much as possible and try to find things that would interest you, that would encourage you to actually to attend the, meet, the meetings. Um, I think it what's challenging for people when they are selected or not selected for the committee is when you don't give enough information to say, I would like to volunteer. If you put as much information in these boxes as possible, I think it's easier to match you to the right committee. Next slide, please. And this is the optional set of demographic questions that we hope everyone will answer. I think this also helps with the selection process for future for the future for ACRL so that we can best fit and make sure that everyone gets an opportunity. Next, next slide, please. And this is the committee volunteer form review and then make sure that um, please confirm the following committees are the ones you've selected. So just make sure that you do fill out the form and also always hit submit. I know that I have been guilty of, I thought I filled something out and I forgot to hit submit. So make sure you do that. And now I'd like to introduce our next presenter, Heather Smedberg. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm Heather Smedberg. I'm the current chair of the Rare Books and Manuscripts section of ACRL, and my cat just woke up, so I'm sorry. You might hear a little bit of serenade in the background. Um, the acronym for Rare Books section of ACRL is RBMS, so I'll refer to that occasionally throughout. I'm also the reference and instruction coordinator for special collections and archives at the University of California, San Diego. RBMS focuses on the work most directly related to my day-to-day -day work in my branch of our profession. And so like many of our colleagues, the majority of my contributions have been to RBMS section committees and task forces. And so today I'll be talking about the process of volunteering for section level appointments. So this slide um, kind of follows on what Julie was talking about earlier, looking at section level, the number of applicants per section versus the number of openings um, and it continues on to the, the next slide as well, each line representing one of the acronyms of one of the, um, so the sections of ACRL. Um, the upshot is that um, uh, about 400 or so uh, volunteers volunteered to serve um, only on section committees as opposed to section committees and um, division committees. About 600 or so volunteered for over a thousand open positions. And um, that means that some folks were appointed, uh, a good number of folks were appointed to more than one section level committee appointment, which seems a little bit different than what Julie was reporting happens at the division level. So it shows you that you do have perhaps an opportunity to, to, to be participating in more than one role at the section level. And then um, about 65 or so of the um, of those section committee volunteers applied for committees in more than one section. So while you might find yourself in one particular home section, you can absolutely volunteer for roles in more than one section. When you become a member of ACRL, you can select more than one section to be a part of and then become involved with. 
Um, so next slide, please. Oh, okay, um, so why should I participate? Um, my involvement with the, AC, the ALA, ACRL, and RBMS began when I was an MLIS student at Indiana U University back in 2001 or so. And so I joined as the student chapter at that point. This was a really good and fun way to get my feet wet with this kind of experience. And while I didn't really fully understand what it all meant at that time and how it fit in with the big picture, I learned about scholarships and other opportunities that the organization could offer through that service. And in fact, um, through a student scholarship from ALA, I was able to attend my first ALA conference in Toronto and um, dedicated volunteer hours to ALA at the conference as part of that arrangement. I was paired with the Public Information Office, which as it happened, had to respond to new legislation that came out um, in the US that year during the time of the conference, legislation that challenged our um, organizational, eth professional, ethical underpinnings. And so it was fascinating for me um, and inspiring to see the legal adv advocacy arm of ALA spring into action. And it helped me to see some of the work that the larger organization undertakes. Well, that was very interesting when I joined myself and looked for volunteer opportunities. I did not immediately seek volunteer opportunities at that higher level, but instead looked to my section, RBMS, my section. Um, and for many people, the section they call home is the primary motivator for getting involved. And this may be where they contribute out throughout their career. For others, the section level appointments might offer an opportunity to gain some experience before taking on roles at the larger division level on ACRL committees. I started in RBMS working on a couple of task forces aimed at developing professional guidelines and found the work challenging and incredibly rewarding. I also attended meetings of committees that interested me, but that I was not yet a member of to get an idea of what the work entailed. And then I ended up serving on some of those committees and following that served as co-chair on some of those section committees. I even had the opportunity to help advocate for the development of a new section committee and then served as the inaugural co-chair of that group. Um, I like collaborating, so I've served in a lot of co-chair co -chair roles. Sometimes chairs might be a solo position and sometimes they might be co-chairs. All of these layered experiences helped me feel more confident about the prospect of serving as chair of the section. And I feel it's a great honor to now be serving in this role for RBMS. In each of these roles, it helped me to develop or refine skills or practices or simply served as an outlet for administrative communication, project management, or people management skills and um, roles. I was also able to bring what I learned or gained through these roles back to my day-to-day -day work, even as I was bringing my special collections, professional expertise into the roles. And I found that to be really rewarding. People often report that serving as a leader in ACRL provides opportunities to develop or demonstrate leadership skills that can help them build their resume and grow in their current position or grow into new roles. But even if you're not seeking this kind of resume development, I personally think that the service to the profession can be personally and professionally something to be proud of. It can be a way to share your voice and ideas about the future of our profession and to help steward and support emerging professional, professionals in really important ways. Next slide, please. Okay, so how do I go about learning about the options and what is the process for volunteering? Similar to what Rusty described, the volunteer form is online and it lists all the ACRL sections with links to rosters and the websites where you can start to get a lay of the land and see what work is involved in those, each of those committees. Uh, next slide, please. You can volunteer to join a committee or task force as a member, or you can throw your name in the hat to serve as a chair of one of these groups. Um, oftentimes committee task force, committee or task force chairs are drawn from current committee members. And so checking the box does not sort of guarantee your appointment as a chair, but rather it signals to the appointing officers that you have an interest should there be a need in serving in this role. And then beyond committees and task forces, discussion group conveners and interest group conveners are two other types of volunteer opportunities that Lauren will talk about a little bit later in this webinar. Next slide, please. So this slide just lays out the requirements and expectations of committee members. Basically, you need to be a member of ALA and the section, um, and you need to attend the meetings as many, many of the meetings are in person, um, I'm sorry, are virtual, and so do not require in-person attendance, but some may. Um, you need to work 
and participate in that work of the committee fully and then respond promptly to the communications from the community chairs or other members. So be active, be involved, be engaged. Next slide, please. So most committees do do their work virtually, even though I misspoke a moment earlier. Um, there's no conference attendance requirement for um, committees, except if you're um, on a local arrangements or conference program planning committee and executive committees. So if you're unsure about whether conference attendance is required, you can always check before volunteering. The, if you want to volunteer for a section, your section affiliations will automatically display. So here you can see the, um, the IS or inform, um, instruction section is selected. So as Rusty showed earlier, the ALA, and then you select ACRL, this is one, one hierarchical level below that to select the section that you want to find committee opportunities for. Next slide, please. Notice, unlike at the division level, there is no checkbox to volunteer for all IS committees. I mean, you technically could check them all, but um, there's no one checkbox. But still, as Rusty mentioned, it's best to be strategic and select the groups that you have the most interest in. There's nothing um, stopping you from casting a wide net, but that can make it hard for appointing officers to know where it might be best to match your service and interest to the section's needs. While each section may have their own strategy for making matches, and RBMS, for example, as the vice chair during last year's term, I was in charge of appointments to begin during this year, um, my term as chair that started in July. I collaborated with the chairs of each RBMS committee to determine um, how many and um, um, how many volunteers they could take on and um, got their input on what kinds of interests and experiences from the volunteers they would like to add to their group. And so we look to find a mix of newer to the profession or to the group and um, more experienced colleagues and find that balance that Julie talked about earlier. We, um, following ACRL, um, ACRL's um, EDI goals, we also strive to have a diversity of representation as Julie talked about earlier. And so filling out the optional demographic information on the form is really helpful to the appointing officers to find that balance and um, find a good mix of representation from the personal demographic information, as well as from the size and type of institution, geographic area, et cetera. Next slide, please. So the upshot is, no matter if you select one or just a couple um, committees, or if you express interest in a few or more, it's best to use the form to customize your responses to help the appointing officers make those matches. So please be sure and use those free text boxes that um, Rusty showed earlier to articulate what interests you the most or briefly share some experiences from your work or past ACRL or other organizational experiences that might make you a strong match for the roles you expressed interest in. And as Julie noted, you know, there's a lot of opportunities, but also a lot of volunteers. So if you're not matched at first, don't lose heart. Please do keep volunteering. Uh, next slide, please. If you're not selected for, oh, um, there are other ways to think, think forward. If you're not selected right away for committee or not sure that those kinds of opportunities are right for you right now, there are another other ways to get involved in ACRL, including um, section publications or participate in discussion forums, whether virtually or at ALA annual, attend conference programs, like I mentioned, visit committee meetings or interact with a section on social media or attend informal gatherings and conferences to get a better idea of, of um, ways to contribute first. And if you're a student, I definitely recommend getting involved in your student chapter if there's options for that. So thank you so much for your interest in serving the profession through ACRL section work. I'll now pass it along to our next presenter, Lauren Carlton. Actually, it's gonna be me. I'm gonna sneak in there in between you and Lauren. Hi everyone, I'm Rachel Minkin. Um, waving in case you got your camera on or in case you see my camera. Um, currently, I'm chair of leadership recruitment and nomination committee, which is a huge mouthful. So we usually refer to ourselves as ACRL, LRNC, which is also a mouthful, but not quite as bad a mouthful. Um, we are, I'm laughing because it's every time I say it, it's more ridiculous. Every year, though, we do important work. Our committee identifies and we assess a diverse pool, and I'm emphasizing diverse pool of potential candidates 
Um, and select nominees were for ACRL vice president, president-elect, um, for ACRL representative to the ALA council uh, as necessary, and to directors and directors as large, and that's also as necessary. We also will pull um, folks for our, um, from the sections for IFLA positions as well. We ask for nominations. So we ask that you nominate folks and we also ask for self nominations. And I wanna emphasize that as well. Uh, and we are actively, actively, actively seeking, not just waiting for you, but our committee as well is going out and actively seeking the best people for the positions. And so to that end, I wanna share with you just a little like peek behind the curtain on how this process works. Um, so that you can be in on this. So I want you to be in on this action. Thank you, Aloha, it's perfect. So every year, the call goes out for um, folks who are interested in nominating others or self-nominating for ACRL board positions. And so this year, you would have seen that call go on on or about like the first week of November. Um, for instance, it was in the ACRL Insider. Um, actually, I even have that link, possibly, that I could share with you in the chat. Oh, look at that. Um, and so within that ACRL, for instance, in this insider blurb, if you go ahead and read through that, there is a nomination form. So uh, use that form if you want to nominate someone to the ACRL board or to one of the, you know, to one of these positions, or if you want to self-nominate, there's that form is used for all of the things. In either case, we oftentimes have people say, but I don't know. I don't know what a board person does. What is the responsibility? How do they do? There is a link also within here to, this is a great mouthful too, ACRL Guide to Policies and Procedures. If you want chapter two. And I, let me see if I can pull that link for you as well, because that's an, also a helpful one. In case you want to take a peek. Within this, it, you know, when you pull up that link, it's not going to look fancy, but it will give you details on um, who does what and what are your expectations. Um, what does it mean to be a board member? It's a great overview and will help you sort of suss out what those positions do and whether you're the person for that position. Um, the form itself, when you do fill out the nomination form, it is super short, like not even, I don't even think it's as long as those volunteer forms, it's much shorter than that. Um, but most importantly, I feel on that form is one text box. Again, it's that free text box, the box that both um, Rusty and Heather were talking about. Briefly describe why you believe this person is a good candidate to serve on the board of directors. Tell us why you're good. We want to know. We want all the information we can get about you. This doesn't mean that you have to accept a nomination. This doesn't mean that you're automatically gonna show up on a slate, but let us know that you are interested and we will take it from there. We're gonna run with it. Um, this year, that form closes on February 15th. So February 15th, 2022. Um, and so again, seeking your nominations and your self nominations. We're gonna actively seek out those folks who we get from that form. We're also gonna try to pull people. So the committee members themselves are gonna ask all sorts of people. And why we do that, we are also considering ACRL's um, EDI initiative. So we are looking at um, equity, we're looking at diversity, we're looking at inclusion. Those are the highest priorities when we come to recommending candidates. So we want to make all sure all of that is kept in mind. So I encourage you, I encourage you, I encourage you that when you are um, thinking about how you serve, um, ACRL and whether you want to serve, that there is a wide range of options, right? So if you are starting out, you, you know, find your comfortable fit. And if you've been with us a while, think about some of these other positions as well. We're going to look at those nomination forms. We're going to see and look at all the service that you've done for ACRL. So it, it does, it does matter that you volunteer because we're looking at that too. The committee is taking a peek. Um, we're going to look at what other folks say about you when they nominate you, and we're going to look at what you say about yourself. Then our committee, we have a very robust schedule. We're going to, um, starting like in January, actually, and right through, pretty much through April, we are combing through, combing through, combing through all of the folks who are volunteering for these, these board positions um, with the idea that we come up with a slate 
that is an accurate um, representation of all of the skills and all of the diversity that is out there in ACRL. Um, so again, I encourage you to self-nominate. I encourage you to encourage your friends to nominate your colleagues. And I encourage you to try your hand. Um, acquire ACRL committee knowledge, you know, start out wherever you start out, start at the section, start at the division level, um, try on the leadership opportunities, put that hat on to be a chair, give it a shot. I love the co-chair idea. Um, and then we, the, LCR, the LRNC committee, we're going to look forward to seeing your names. We want to see your names on our nomination list in years coming up. Um, so please feel free to reach out uh, with any questions. Um, you have my email on this um, on this webinar, um, and I'm looking really looking forward to seeing you in the future. Uh, and I am going to turn this over to Lauren Carlson, who's going to talk to you about more chances to volunteer via ACRL. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry, my video was taking a second to turn on there. Uh, yes, my name is Lauren Carlton, and I am the staff liaison to interest groups, discussion groups, and sections here at ACRL. So if you get involved with any of those, um, I will be the go-to person for questions and such. Um, first, I want to talk to you today about some opportunities with our interest groups. Oh, my video went off again. Um, next slide, please. So interest groups. Um, come at no cost to join on your ACRL membership form. So once you become an ACRL member, it is free to join any of our interest groups. There is a three-year leadership commitment if you decide to become a convener. And the call for volunteers for interest group conveners goes out in the spring. The formal position titles are incoming convener, convener, and past convener. So that's why it's a three-year term. And unlike the sections that we talked about earlier, you do not need to volunteer through the appointment system. These appointments are handled by reaching out to your interest group's current convener and myself. Uh, to, if, so if you'd like to get involved, you can just email that convener and then they will point you to me and we handle those forms manually. Um, interest groups may create informal working groups. They may also sponsor a program at ALA annual conferences. Um, and interest groups must meet at least once a year, either in person or virtually, um, usually around ALA conference time, but you can meet any time of the year, really. And the link at the bottom of this slide will take you to all of the interest groups um, in the Directory of Leadership, which I can pop that in the chat as well when I'm done speaking. But again, these slides will be sent out. Next slide, please. A little bit more about your responsibilities if you do decide to become a convener. Um, conveners of interest groups are in charge of scheduling meetings and promoting them via usually the ALA Connect space. Um, you will submit meeting agendas and minutes to me, your staff liaison. You will be moderating the discussion list in the online community, which is again, all hosted through ALA Connect. You will be submitting an annual plan for excellence report every year in July. Um, so we'll send you information on that each year. You also have to petition for your interest group to renew every three years. Um, it's just a simple board action form that you fill out and send to me, but you must do that every three years. Um, you will also be serving on the Community of Practice Assembly. And as a convener, if you get elected, you will be then helping select the incoming conveners for the next term. Um, and interest groups may also have co-conveners. So whether you're an incoming, a current convener or a past convener, there can be up to two people in those positions um, at any time, although it is not required. A minimum of one is required. Um, incoming and past conveners may be involved as little or as much as wanted or needed. Um, but the, when you serve as convener in that second term, that's when you'll be handling most of this stuff. Next slide, please. And here's just a list of all of the interest groups that we currently offer. And again, um, I can pop the link in the chat or when you get the slides, you can go to our website and each interest group has its roster and that's where you will see who the current conveners are, as well as a link to the ALA Connect space, which is also the discussion list. Next slide, please. And now I'll be talking about discussion groups, which are very similar uh, to interest groups. They're just a little bit more informal and a more flexible way to discuss current issues facing the profession. 
Um, they, these are open to both ACRL members and non-members. Interest groups, you would add that to your ACRL membership to be involved. This uh, you could also join if you're a non-member. There's only a one-year commitment for a convener uh, with the option to recommit as convener again for another year, or you can pass the torch. So there's no limit there. Again, the call for volunteers will go out in the spring. And again, unlike sections, this is not handled through the volunteer system. It would be just like an interest group. I apologize for the typo there. You would be reaching out to your discussion group's current convener and staff liaison again, myself, if you are interested in being appointed. Um, you also must meet at least once a year, either in person at ALA conferences or virtually. And again, it doesn't have to be exactly that conference week, just sometime uh, throughout the year. Um, discussion groups do not sponsor annual conference programs, but you can host discussion forums, which often include presentations. Um, and discussion groups will not be petitioning to renew, but they will be dissolved if inactive. And again, there's a link there that you can see all the discussion groups at. So you can check that out. Next slide, please. Discussion group convener responsibilities. Um, again, very similar to interest groups. They will be scheduling and promoting the meetings. Um, you'll be deciding on meeting topics. You will be moderating the discussion list uh, and the ALA Connect community. Those are uh, all in one place now. Um, You'll be in charge of sparking and moderating discussions on the Connect space, kind of keeping an eye on that. And again, you may have a co-convener. So if two people want to lead the group, that is completely fine. But again, a minimum of one leader is required. Next slide, please. And again, here's just a list of all of the discussion groups that we currently offer. Um, and again, if you'll go to that directory of leadership, which I can link in a moment, um, you'll see on each roster an ALA Connect space um, linked at the bottom in the list of current conveners. So you'll know who to reach out to and how to get involved. Next slide, please. And again, there's more information. Um, I would highly suggest looking at the guide to policies and procedures around uh, COPA, uh, especially if you're interested in an interest group, that will be your go-to place for all of um, your questions about guidelines and such and things like that. And of course, you can always reach out to me as staff liaison anytime with specific questions. I'm always happy to help. Next slide. Um, I think we're gonna hand it back to Rusty here to wrap up. Thank you, Julie, Heather, Rachel, Lauren, and Elos for doing the slides. Now we're gonna open it up our last 14 minutes to questions anybody might have. If you do have any questions about the process, you can contact me and I'll either an can answer them the best as I can or forward it to the appropriate person. Um, my email address is the, on the slide, M-I-C-H-A-L-R at gbc.edu. Um, does anyone have any questions? You can put them in the chat or unmute yourself. If you have any questions, we'd like to hear from you. Is it ELO is to put in the chat, um, please complete the evaluation form. It would be much appreciated. Um, Lauren is putting in the chat the interest group pages and discussion group pages. Thank you, Elizabeth. Um, We'll keep keep these notes for next year's membership committee so that we <laughs> to make sure that everything is covered again properly. And thank you all for attending. If there's no more questions, we can always give people back their time. So we'll maybe hold on for a couple more minutes in case something anything pops in new ones.
I see a question in the chat about the best link to find out about more specific committees and sections. That's a great question. Um, I'm going to link in the chat now a link to the sections page on our directory of leadership where each 15 sections are linked uh, on the page. So if you go to each section, section's roster, that is a tongue twister, um, at the bottom, you will find a list of all of their committees. And if you click that, that will take you to that committee's roster. And from there, you can see each committee um, and group has an ALA Connect space. So I would suggest going to the section page that I'm about to put in the chat and then just going to each individual section and kind of taking a glance at the bottom of their rosters of the titles of those committees. And again, just clicking on that roster and maybe checking out um, the charge of that committee and seeing which one would interest you most. Lauren, could you also share the, the link to the division level committees, the list of those committees and then those rosters as well? Yes. Thank you. And same for that, the rosters will be the best, your best friend here and finding um, more information because the charge is listed and a lot of these have ALA Connect spaces. Um, some committee spaces are not open, but all of the discussion group, interest group and main section pages are. So you could just pop into those spaces and you don't even have to join the community to view a lot of what's going on. So you could just see what people are talking about and think like, hey, that discussion seems interesting. Maybe I wanna be part of this group, so. Just kind of taking a look through all those spaces would be my main piece of advice. You see there's a question from Tori about early career librarians and where to start. Um, and I wondered if it would be okay if I took a stab at that. Um, Tori, I think for me, um, I, I really, I think I'm probably for, for each individual here, it's really a place of where is your comfort and what sort of, um, where do you want to jump in? What does look interesting to you? Um, for me, discussion groups didn't fit what I thought I wanted to do. And I actually went right to those division level ones. That to me felt like a good fit. Um, and so you, when you go through sort of all of these, see what see what feels good. Like you don't have to lead the thing right away. You might just want to be in the thing to, to start with. Um, but if you're like, no, I want leadership, like dive into the leadership position where you want. I mean, you know, you may not get it the first time, but you can express that interest. I could add a little bit to, to mm -hmm. what Rachel's saying. Um, you know, it does depend on how much you, you are looking and seeking community uh, versus opportunities to lead. Um, a discussion group or an interest group um, is less uh, formalized and an, an easy way to get some leadership experience and to, to plan some programs. If you want to be in a community of practice where you have opportunities to discuss something that's really um, a, an interest of yours and be part of a team, getting on a committee at a section level might be a great way to start or a division level committee. Um, and then at the section level though, you know, you, you start to to learn the, the, the community, you start to um, learn the environment, what they're discussing, and that also offers you then some chances possibly to move into a leadership role from a, a committee appointment. Um, so, uh, you know, a, a, a section level is where many people begin um, their um, engagement with the profession. It's, it's a smaller group. Um, there's, there's more potential to to find um, someone who can help you navigate some of the, the um, bureaucracy of ACRL, if you will. <laughs> um, but um, if you have a great passion for a division level committee, I would definitely put your interest in that free text box and, and the experience that you can give to that committee. So I hope that helps. Can I also just add that I you know, in my case, as the vice chair of our, one of the sections, I definitely appointed a lot of early career people to committee positions. Um, and like I you know, mentioned, we're often trying to find a blend of people with a little bit more seniority and people who are coming in with fresh perspectives. So um, some, you know, not everybody who volunteered got a spot, but there were lots of folks who were early career um, early career professionals who got placed on committees in, in our section. And um, uh, the, the committees within our section, some of them are really focused on functional work like instruction and outreach or 
you know, technical services or cataloging and others are focused on sort of like budget for the section or the executive board for the section, which, you know, these are elected positions, but, you know, there's uh, some of them are a little bit more focused on your day to day work and others might be more focused on administrative or project management things for ACRL or the section. So there's a variety of types of committees that you can get involved in as well. So um, there's lots of things to consider in what you might be wanting to look for. I would just like to add that what, whatever, especially as an early career librarian, I tell my staff, whatever interests you, whatever whatever you find that is your passion, you should try to get involved in. So if, if it, even if you don't get into a division level or a section in the beginning, get involved in, in the discussion group or an interest group and participate. Um, being out there and getting your name out there helps a lot with getting this done. And then also you, you can add that to the form when you do submit for, for a volunteer form so that you can say, this is, these are the things I have been involved with in ACRL over time. So you might not get it the first time as an early career librarian. It, just keep on participating is probably the best bet. See, there's another question about the three appointments and how applicable that is. Um, and I'm going to ask Lauren, would you take that first just to make sure I don't misspeak? <laughs> yeah, I'm actually going to turn. I'm glad Mary Jane is here. I'm going to turn to her because I think that uh, this is correct. It does include uh, discussion groups and interest groups as well. And I think that rule is kind of just in place because, you know, if you're convening on three different committees, that is a lot of work. So we just like don't want people to get overwhelmed. But Mary Jane, if you could pop in and correct me if I'm misspeaking, I would appreciate that. Oh, she says that's correct in the chat. So yep, that would include all appointments. This is Eloa, so I'm gonna chime in just one minute in regards to the three uh, committee appointments. You, one thing you wanna make sure is that you are not uh, overloading your plate. Uh, taking on a committee, whether it's a section, a committee, an interest group, it does require work and dedication. We don't want you to be overwhelmed uh, because this is volunteer for you and you do have a regular uh, place of employment. So we want you to have some balance here and we don't want you to feel overloaded. And that is having three is the max, that's a requirement. You can't go beyond three uh, committees. Think of it as a safety mechanism for you and for your well-being from one perspective. Thank you everyone for attending. Thank you for our speakers, Lois, Mary Jane, Lauren, for helping and answering all questions and hope you all have a great day.